Okay, I'm publishing a video to Heithel today right now, and I was then watching his latest video or your latest video to me, and um, so this is a reply to that one. I'll try to remember to put the link up, but it'll take a while. It's automatic upload from the camera. But anyway, I mean, the basic thing is, um, I, I get your position, Heithel today. I do disagree. You seem to think that we're just filling in blanks what you actually say something like there's no physics that's uh, I'm paraphrasing there's no physics that's going to be discovered in biology that contradicts current theory it's all going to be finding a new species of ant there's not going to be any new kinds of life or new kinds of mechanics or I just I, I'm a skeptic you should know right off uh, that's exactly what I don't believe um, neurobiology they are using biochemistry and physics of chemical reactions of biologic or excuse me organic uh, chemicals they are studying that to try to figure out how the brain works one of the ways we're looking into you know cognition cognitive sciences like I said you know anesthesia uh, anesthesia and you said well no they know that well you just take it a different way. I say they know certain stuff that's got them up to the edge of the next question. And you keep going completely outside, well, you know, quote me, because that's you, the way you think of science. I just think there's places that we don't know. I'm talking about it's the parts we don't know. And you keep quoting me as saying that it, quantum mechanics won't explain it. I do think there's a good chance that quantum mechanics will explain, will open that up. I wouldn't be surprised if there's other elements of physics because we found that in evolution, biology is very, um, very clever about putting physics to use. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't see how you can say whether it'll be. I mean, I, you evidently you're saying that we're not going to discover new physics that contradicts our current physics, you say all that's left to do is unify quantum mechanics and relativity, and you don't think that anything in that unification might contradict our current theory? I don't see how that's impossible. Part of it will, and it might be semantics in, in what you decide to call the new thing, but obviously some of the actual ideas are going to be different change the ideas we have now. It's not just out going out there and collecting the different colors of the flowers that are all the same, but we, oh, this one's a little bit darker, this one, you know, we're just filling it in. Um, you just seem out of touch with all the unknown things. I, I do want to do a series of uh, the mysteries of physics and why they're important and how, <coughs> you know, how, how this kind of stuff works. I mean, when you say unification of those two schools of theory, that's just what I was calling physics we don't have yet, right? Um, finding a new species of ant is arguably fitting something into a science, you know, a scientific framework, and it's, it's a little bit surprising, but some things are more surprising, and it depends on, you know, how surprising it is, but as far as you're saying when they find something that contradicts current physics, then it goes back to the physics department. That, too, is not the whole picture. They also get things they can't explain. Not that contradict, but just aren't explained. Right? So this is the basic difference between you and I. I mean, one is you think we're just filling in. The, the, the theory's all done and we're filling in, that's what you said, you don't, you're sure that nothing we'll find out in biology will contradict it. I think we're likely to find out things that contradict our current theory, why? Because the phenomena are so extremely unaddressed, right? And that's what you, you seem to forget, we're not talking, we have a real example, it's not a, an ant, it's this subjective experience, it's the most ever-present common experience you have. It, over time, as a 
as a thing over time. It's all that you have. It's the only experience you have is the subjective experience. Everything else is a subset of it for you. And unless you have an explanation, it doesn't really matter all your theory of science here because there is no explanation. And you don't know if it'll be contradictory physics or physics we already understand. And if I exclude classical physics from it, then that's significant. For one thing, that means it can't be simulated in a computer, which uses a classical kind of reasoning scheme. Um, yeah, I don't think I could be more clear, and the distinction is important because you're talking ultimately about why we don't really have, there's nothing to ask in physics. Well, there is, and I'm really going to continue to look into uh, the research that asks it and think about it myself to whatever degree. You don't want that to happen? Well, too bad. You know, and so the distinction, you did this last time we talked, where then you go, well, this distinction makes no difference to us. Well, I'm the one that opened this conversation, and I'm saying that what the leads are on physical properties of the will. One is that it's not in classical mechanics. We should look at quantum mechanics because we have that theory already. And there's obviously a lot of things that we could fill in in that theory, the amazing things is that are surprising that the theory already says are possible, but we just can't figure out how to make it happen on purpose. Maybe the hard problem of consciousness has some answers in there. That seems possible to me because of the similarity between how the quantum world works in terms of there being more than one possibility in the future. And, and that's the other thing. It's, it, you say determinism is, well, not among particle physicists. Okay, not among Richard Feynman's and stuff. Okay, um, so you, you could take your impression from wherever you want. I'd prefer to make my own. Uh, and, and I don't care if you think it's entirely settled. It's not something that's done by vote. It's done by reasoning. If your reasoning is better and your research is better, then you get to have a better answer. Good for you. But uh, I don't think you do. I think it's ridiculous, the idea that you know which of the possible options in physics is going to happen that'll explain a question that we don't have much lead on currently. What is the lead? Just tell me, what is the lead that we're filling in for consciousness? Oh, all we have to do is... See, because we have a lead on explaining why animals behave so complicated, because we can si simulate some of the behaviors. But none of that looks like when you integrate it and do some induction that it just pops into a subjective experience. And... The, your philosophy of science isn't going to answer that question. If you think you have an answer, or even just what the lead is, and it's like, here's all we're filling in, here's the blank we're filling in, then say what it is. Because you, last time you talked about it, you made a description that just involved how when somebody says they're conscious, they're, they could just be an automaton. I asked you a question I haven't heard the answer to yet, which is, I'm not talking about you explaining their consciousness. I'm talking about you explaining your own consciousness. How could your own consciousness exist? If you're a solipsist and insist I can't prove another consciousness exists, you don't believe I have one, whatever, then I'm a figment of your imagination asking you, why does your consciousness exist? Yours. Okay.